Warning, this video has images of nasty knockoff toys getting smashed, crashed and trashed. Well, let's get into it. The first Thomas Joy that we've got to look at is called a Thomas and Friends racing track. This place it cost me $25 and it's got some rather strange wording on the box. Come on, let's go into the happy world together. New track park series. And let's not forget to keep the track clean. Looks like this place it's got lights, it's got sounds and it's got a car going up a very steep hill. The end of box artwork looks like this. Many people ask me to show the end of box artwork. And on the rear of the box is basically the instructions to put together this quite elaborate playset. I made this playset before making this video and it was quite a challenge to put together. Well here's this very strange playset. I've got a take and play Percy down there so you can see the scale of this playset and see how large it is. Here are the trains that came with it. There's like a little parking bay here. And to give you a, route, a run through of where you go for trains, they can get sent up here. They go past this poster here, there's some sort of 747 flying in the sky. Through the bridge there, past another poster. Down past the jet fighter on the helipad. Who knows why? Because it's the dark side of course. Down this beautiful spiral. Then you get fed onto this other elevator here. Then you come down around here through the Perspex tunnel. Down around and your adventure starts all over again. But there's also these areas of lights. And all in all it's quite a spectacular looking playset. Let's take a look at the little trains in this playset. This one's Thomas, the number one engine. Bit of detail on the side there. There's his face. Looks sort of happy, doesn't it? There's the other side. There's the top. There are the rollers underneath. Quite heavy. Uh, and that's the back of him. Let's take a look at the... Well, I'm calling it Percy, but I know you guys will say something else. What's number three? Henry, isn't it? I'm calling it Percy because it's... Well, it's no tender on it. It's a Percy Henry. Suppose you can put two of them together to make six, wouldn't it? And then it'd be Percy. Rollers in the back. Blah, blah, blah. Quite an interesting combination of trains. And what's difficult to see, there's actually numbers here. That's bay one. There's bay two. I'm just shuffling along here. Bay three, bay four, and bay five. And you'd have a feeling that this playset would also come in a car variation as well. The most peculiar aspect to this playset is some of the artwork on these large stickers. And one of these pictures looks like something ripped out of the Hornby Model Trains books. Someone's, someone in the audience will know. That's what it looks like to me. They look like Hornby Trains. And there's this very strange little bit of info, which is happy train track, speed limit 350 miles per hour. Now, who knows what that really means? It's just the strangest thing to read. Well, let's load it up and let's get into some choo-choo action. Come on, boys. This won't hurt one bit. Well, you're totally ready to be underwhelmed here. Oh, fancy that. And it's having trouble pulling those trains up. Come on. I know the set has a bit of trouble when there's a bit of weight on it. So I've got to space the trains out a bit. Welcome to the dark side. Oh, come on. This isn't looking good at all, is it? Oh. Fail, fail, fail. I'm going to have to give this set Mr. Hammer, I think. It's just not good enough for me. Okay, we've got the jet flying up there. I put a piece of tape over that sound chip because it was sending me mad. There's obviously a problem here, isn't there? It can't handle all these trains on this ramp, and it's just ejected a Henry Percy. I mean, what rubbish is this? And you probably find even that one, it can't handle two trains going up. Oh, it just made it up. I mean, really, you only... You can only put two trains on this playset, and as soon as there's two on, all that ramp's just hopeless. It can only really pull up one at a time. Oh, I mean, welcome to the dark side, guys. This is absolute rubbish of the highest degree. I pulled those trains off the playset. Let's see, we'll probably get two up and running if I let Thomas go up there. I could probably put a Percy on here if I give him a bit of spacing. Oh, they're on a race now, or sort of a race. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh here, but, you know, you'd expect it to work a bit better than this. This is really, really poor, poor showing from the dark side. I've seen much better dark side than this in previous videos, I can assure you. Oh, and Thomas is starting no, There he goes. You know, some people, I don't know, what was it, $25 for this? I'll tell you what, I'm feeling mighty ripped off at the moment. Well... Henry Percy gave Thomas a shove, now Henry Percy's on strike, and I bet you Thomas will come along. 
and give a shove and you'll probably find that Thomas will be on strike. Yep, isn't that funny? Oh, now they're both stuck. Welcome to the dark side. Well, it's got some really strange elements on this playset, apart from the fact that it barely works. And behind here, you can see I put a bit of tape over the speaker there. It's this sort of, I don't know what you call it, see-through house. Very strange. There's the back of the billboards, a bit ugly. There's the bridge. Sometimes you've got to see the back of this stuff just to see how bad it is. Uh, I think I've seen enough of this. I think I'm going to bring a friend out to sort this place it out. Well, what's interesting here is once those trains are kept well apart, that starts to work. I can see things aren't getting caught up and things are going around as they should. But it's a bit late because I'm going to introduce this playset to Mr. Hammer who likes to do a bit of redesigning of knockoff toys. Well, there is that saying, you need to be cruel to be kind. Here we go. I'd say that redesign has fixed the problem. Well, as usual, a Pez Angry Bird seems to have copped a smack in the face there. There's bits of debris everywhere. There's one of the ramps. There's that weird rubber track that didn't want to work properly. Going along, that looks like the, the sound chip or something there. Thank goodness that's gone. There's the motor and the gears. Horrible little plastic thing that is. Coming along, there's the other ramp. It really did smack up, didn't it? It's in pieces everywhere. There's a few batteries everywhere. What's that there? A bit of electrical gear. A bit more ramp here. I don't know how the GoPro survived. It's taking a whack, I think. There's that jet fighter. Not looking that smart now, is it? And I only loaded um, Henry Percy's on that because I want to save the Thomases for my amazing Thomas knockoff collection. Best of all, it's got rid of that nasty noise. Well, guess what flew across my workshop at high velocity? This 747 trying to escape. And probably people are saying, well, why are you smashing up the toys there? Well, don't worry. This toy here is lethal. It has all sorts of choking hazards in it. And it's just rubbish. It's the sort of stuff which, well, it deserves the hammer every time. Well, moving right along. Here are two play sets that look like Tommy knockoffs. Thomas's Busy Day, that one there, cost me $12. And a more elaborate set, and same title, Thomas's Busy Day, that one cost me $20. What is very interesting here is when you analyse the artwork, this is the larger $20 set, and look at the track there, you can just see the word Tomy on that piece of track. What's always confusing with these sets is what exactly do you get? There's the set numbers, and if I spin around the box and show you the back artwork here, this is the $12 set, the smaller one. It shows this layout here, and there's a certain number associated with that, and this other layout here, but I don't know exactly what's inside this box. But then, so the best way to solve this mystery is to basically unbox it and take a look at what we have inside. Oh, there's a rogue battery floating around. Maybe that's a bit of a bonus. And up further is the track parks. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, this looks cheap and nasty. And, oh, wait till you see the track and what it says. Very, very curious. Well, here is the track pack. Um, look at that for a station. It's a 2D, two-dimensional station. Very, very cheap and nasty. Uh, and what is very, very interesting is look at the track here and look what it says on it. Oh dear me. And you know what I'm going to say here? Welcome to the dark side. Just the first appraisal of this uh, fake track. It actually is nice and flexible. It's not, you know, stiff. It's not going to break. I shouldn't say too many other good things about it or else you'll start to get excited. I'll just see how this knockoff track couples. It seems to be okay, but there's one telltale sign of this knockoff is there's, it's pretty rough. Around here there's a lot of or excess plastic or flashing here and you wouldn't see that on the real McCoy Tammy track. Well apart from track there's a couple of lovely trees here with a bunch of coconuts and there's this other very curious bag which I've got no idea what it does. Well the jewel in the crown of this knockoff is possibly hidden away in here. Let's unbox this one. A few batteries thrown in. Nicer than wasn't it? 
and uh, we'll have a bit of inspection of what we've got. Come on, my pretty. I'm your daddy. Well, let's take a look at this very, very strange interpretation of Annie and Clarabel. Um, it looks like it looks like they've got those electrical pickups on trains. What are they? Pentagraphs? Pentagraphs? You guys can tell me. I don't know. Um, but this thing is horribly cheap and nasty. Let me get it into my hands and show you. Well, there's a view of the top of this very strange carriage with an electrical pickup thing. And that looked like you know the heat exchangers that you'd see on these things. I'm just making words up here. I hope I'm right. There's a side. And I really want to point out to you why I say these toys are killers. And if I just open this up, look how easy this opens up. Okay. So we've got it in two parts. And then what is really sinister and what is really dangerous about this toy is... Look how simple I can get this wheels off this here. Pull the wheel here. Bang. It's all apart. And look at this. The wheels just come off like that. The whole thing is now apart. That wheel is off. That wheel is off. Nothing's attached here. This wheel will just come apart as well. That's why these toys have numerous choking hazards. And that's why these toys are killers. And yet people buy this stuff thinking they are getting a good deal. And I think I've worked out the mystery to what those little blue things are in this mysterious bag. And I believe these are for coupling the trains together. And here's a look at our little blue dark side hero. It's quite an unusual looking train. Um, I suppose you can have something to say about it. It's all lopsided as well. That's just, you know, dark side for you. Doesn't sit right. And let's go in and have a look at that little face. Well, I don't know about you, but that is giving me the creeps. Well, I'll do a bit of an in-hand appraisal here of this very strange knockoff toy. It's got sharp edges all over it, really pointy edges. Strange bits of artwork which have gone awry. The face here is about to peel off. This is like as low end, or getting to low end scale, that I saw in those cars toys recently, which were really dangerous. Here's the other side, there's the top of the engine. The switch is in the cold bunker, which is a little bit unusual. Um, there's the rear coupling of those little clips go on. This is the underneath. It's got some traction tires here, it just says made in China and nothing else. If you unclip it and it's really easy to get an access inside, that's where these toys are dangerous because children do choke on batteries and things. The batteries are in top on top here and there's two of them, which is unusual. And the engine or the electric motor is underneath here and it'd be almost direct drive onto the rear axle here. Let me throw in the batteries that were supplied with this and get the top back on or start it up here. It's quite low gear. Look at that. Oh, yeah, this will be a fast one. It'll be a screamer. Let me get the top back on. And there's one very important thing I'd like to do is sit it is, and that is sit it next to a Trackmaster Thomas. Well, there is a real McCoy licensed Trackmaster Thomas sitting next to that nasty fake cloner. And you can see by these pictures here the difference in scale between these two toys. Oh, yeah, I think she's going to be a naughty one. But let's not forget, I've got this larger $20 version of what looks like the same toy. And of course, it doesn't tell you what style you've got. Let's take a look at the back of the box here. And it looks like there's some quite elaborate track plans if you're getting this larger version. But who knows what I've got until I open the box. And that's coming for a beautiful unboxing shot. Because if you don't have an unboxing shot, your video will be unpopular on YouTube. Ooh, looking very familiar, isn't it? Very familiar. A fair bit more track in this set here. Let's pull out the chichis. Here they come. Oh yeah. Well, we love looking for differences, don't we? I think I can see one in the most unusual spot. There's my palm tree and coconuts from the $20 set. There's my tree and coconuts from the $12 set. You see a slight difference there. One looks like it's got a, that one there looks like a darker shade of green and darker brown thank you dark side your variation is beautiful but the very important part of this set versus the other one is you get a number of points so what are you getting here one two three four sets of points and what is it one straight there isn't it funny with train sets how few straights you get you often get heaps of curves and a whole bunch of curves there but you rarely ever get any decent number of straights well, let's get this wacky Thomas out and that very strange Annie and Clara belt. And what I think is happening here is these are a different shade of colour versus the uh, cheaper set. I'll quickly line them up 
beside each other to verify this claim. Well, there's a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. That's the $12 train set there. It looks like it's got darker plastic. And this one here is the $20 train set. Let's take a look at the Thomases. Well, there are the Thomases. I believe they're identical, except the $12 one's got a darker tone to his face. The $20 one has a much lighter tone. Well, let me throw some batteries into this $20 Thomas. It's identical, you know. The face is different. The Aldi batteries as well. Sorry, Mr. Aldi, for having a go at you about your fans, but fair is fair, eh? Well, here you can see me struggling to put these sets together, especially the second one. I think I got lost. I didn't know what track plan I was doing, but I got the trains up and running eventually, and I just kept the camera running until something happened, something drastic, and sure enough, it did. Well, okay, I have assembled those sets. I'm not sure whether I'll put the uh, frame by frame thing of me putting it together, because I struggled with this set here, because um, on the back of the box is a picture, and it shows two short pieces of track being inserted into here but what came with the playset was just one long piece of track and I don't know how to fit that into that circuit there. I was trying to work out what pattern it was that's all I could build there let me get them going again I did have a bit of a run before they had a bit of a crash a bit of a high speed unit this one <laughs> welcome to the dark side it just that happened off camera let's get that back on board you naughty thing doing that off camera we want to see the action, we don't want to see it. Not on camera. You behave, please. And I'll get the other one going. There they go. High speed thrills and spills. They'll probably behave themselves now. Yeah, you know, that's they're going pretty fast. That's something that you wouldn't see your little trackmaster trains do. That sort of velocity. Maybe to ramp up the action, maybe if I pull one train set closer to the other, what do you think? Like that, we're going to see some action here very shortly I think. One of these circuits, something's going to give. Oh! That was so much fun, let's do it again. If it gets going, come on, wake up Thomas. Whoa! Any one of these circuits, there's going to be a catastrophe. Oh! Oh my! Well, I can't help myself when I'm having fun. Very shortly there's going to be a train crash. Oh! And there's going to be a smack in the face here! Oh! That one's just what? Just spinning on its wheels or something? It's a bit unusual. Come on! Wake up! Oh! Why did it fell before it got hit? That's a bit punch drunk. You know me, I could go on doing this all night. I'll never stop having fun doing this. Very shortly, there's going to be a train wreck. Oh! That's got to hurt. Oh, let's do one more, eight. The fun never stops here. Very soon, there's going to be some sort of mishap. Oh, very close. It's going to be the next one. Oh! That one's down. And that one's still surviving. With a slight alteration to the curves on those two playsets I can join them together to make the mega knockoff Tommy. So let's give a bit of chasing going on. Number one and number two. Off they go. I wonder how they're going to end up being in the train wreck. Oh, that one's catching up. It's starting to nudge, 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 and it's over. Oh, good shot. Number one has, well, knocked off number one. Because I can't help myself, let's do that again. Go, Thomases. It's only a matter of time before catastrophe will strike. And that slightly faster Thomas is catching up with the slightly sluggish one. Very soon there's going to be a catastrophe. Whoa, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Say no more. That's right, I can't help myself. Let's do another one. Any moment now, something's going to happen. Whoa, whoa, oh, and it's changed tracks. It's a double whammy crash. How about that? 
You know what? I can't help myself. We're going to do another little crash. Oh, I love seeing trains crash. And especially when they're dark side nasties like these two. Thomas at the back there is catching up. Catching up. Catching up. Very soon. It's going to be a kissing goodbye. Here we go. Any moment now. Whoa. The suspense is killing me. Come on, Thomas. Give it a shove. Please, do something. Oh! Oh! That took some time, but it was well worth the wait. Well, for the fourth attempt, there is the dark face. Thomas doing some lazy loops. Let's introduce the lighter face, Thomas. Into that there and see what happens. I think something horrible is about to happen. Oh! Well, it was a bit of a double tragedy, wasn't it? Watch out, this might get nasty. What? Now, I didn't expect that to happen. Oh, but I did expect that to happen eventually. Well, I'd say someone's burning up their traction tires. In more ways than one, a double Thomas tragedy. You know, the dark side often has merchandise, which is Thomas stuff. And you can take a look at this. There's the tag. A lot of people would be tricked into thinking that this is a licensed well, bag. Well, I can tell you what, this one isn't. And look at the price. I want to sh show you the price here. Let's get the camera to refocus. Look how much I paid for this. Nearly $20. 20 Australian dollars. And like, look at that. Look at that tag there. You'd think it's Thomas and Friends, wouldn't you? Look on the bag here. There's no licensing info there. I mean, I see this a lot. This is just the tip of the iceberg, as far as I know. And you'd probably be tricked because you'd see the little T on the zipper there. But no, there's no tag inside. On a real t Thomas item, you'll see a tag in there and it has the information going back to the company. There's another little T on the zipper there as well. And it's funny because, you know, it's a nice little bag. Probably wouldn't last that long. Well, who knows? It's one of those sort of gambles you take. I'll bring in another one. Both these came from the same shop, and I actually had a very interesting chat to the lady who sold me these. Um, okay, so take a look at this. Look at the detail in this. It's actually it's like denim with embroidery on it. This is the tag. I mean, to me, when I saw this tag straight away, I thought, well, this is looking very suspicious. It's a Thomas backpack, and I want you to look at the price. I bring it in to let the camera refocus there. Twenty dollars for this. I don't know what writing that is. That Chinese or Japanese? Look there. Someone out there will know. It's only a small item. Um, it, I've got to say, it sort of looks nice. It's one of those things where it's got a bit of elastic on the top here. Um, it's got a size five sticker inside, whatever that means. But let's look at the artwork because the artwork in it is quite impressive. And um, Where's the artwork for the top flap? There we are. That one there. Yeah, what do you think? $20, eh? So they, between those two bags there, $40 going to the dark side. Nothing's going to Thomas and Friends. So it's, you know, it's food for thought there, isn't it? And next up is some more merchandise. It's some more bags, but I need you to see the price first. And this one's going to make you laugh. It made me laugh when I purchased these. Nine dollars per bag. And I bought a couple of these actually. My son's got one inside. He loves this bag. It's a great looking bag. Let me open this up. Ah, there's a bit of unwrapping for you. Unboxing and unwrapping is in this video, guys. Very important to say that. Very important. Let's just take a look at this. <laughs> Can anyone see what's going on here yet? Can anyone see the problem with this? Okay. There's... <laughs> <laughs> this is just so funny. Let's send it round. There's the back. Okay. There's the other side. Can you see up here? There's the coal. <laughs> and there's the face. Can you see the problem? Can you? Well, I'd say Thomas has had a very tough day here. There's his number one. There's the driver's cab. There's the coal bunker. What would normally be up here? <laughs> his face. But what's up here? His face. How tragic. Thomas has been made all back the front. Now, I don't know whether this is 
like a licensed product which has gone AWOL and it's just been, you know, sidelined and pushed aside. There's the tag which came with this. Obviously, it's not um, licensed, although some people would may be fooled by that. Uh, I don't know whether this is like a reject from the real line, but it's actually quite a cute little bag. And my trick with bags like this is, you use bags like this to put your camera gear in, because who's ever going to suspect that that knockoff Thomas bag has all your expensive cameras inside? On the strap here, it says, my first Thomas, over and over and over. And on the zipper, it's got a little T. Once again, people might see that and think, oh, it must be a licensed product or must be legit. And sure, even seeing here, people would think that's a legit thing. And sure, there's one bag made all back to the front. I've got one inside that my son has, and he puts all the toys inside it. And there's the other one. I've got to show you more than one, because you might think, oh, it's only one off the end. No, no, they're all like that. But sadly, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to knockoff Thomas and Friends merchandise. And these ones here are some of the nicer ones that you will find. Well, this next one, the Thomas Choo Choo may go down as one of the weirdest dark side ones I've brought to you. There's the front of the box. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There's the back of the box. I don't know what else to say. Sometimes there's not much you can say, is there? Um, until we pull it out of the box and take a look. Let's be reminded that it's high speed, battery operated. More new items available. Vivid and great in style. Convulsion Enter. Over 10 pieces for ages 3 and up. And if you're really lucky, you can find these other exciting styles. On the bottom of the box, it tells you how to put the batteries in and also how to couple the train together. Well, coming in for the unboxing, I should also add this most awkward looking dark side toy. It cost me $7. Seven Australian dollars. And boy, oh boy, this is looking extremely dark side. I just got a feeling this is that same horrid track that I find in all these really cheap and nasty playsets. Oh, how weird. It's got a bit of a humpy bridge there. Okay, let's take a look at the carriages first. They're all similar in design, but they do have different artwork on them. Going along there. I don't even know the name of that first one. I should have said something. Um, that was Henry, and there's Thomas. Just looking back at that first one, is that Lady? Or have I got it totally wrong? Just looking up the end here. And we've got three very, very suspicious looking faces. I think the first thing I would say is look how close together the wheels are in relationship to the length of this carriage. There's a kooky face. There's the other side. There's no face on the other end. It's blank, but it's got one of those telegraphs, pentagraphs, whatever they call them, on the top here, as if it's electric or... I mean, I hope I'm saying it right there. It's just very cheap and nasty, and because I can feel this thing... It's just horrible. I mean, the coupling system on it is just horrible. It just feels like it's going to break apart. The wheels feel bad. It's just Dark Side Classic all over. Well, here's the engine with this very, very unusual knockoff set. Very poor knockoff set. Well, they're all poor, but this one is exceptionally poor. I suppose people are going to say, well, it's Henry because it's number three. But look at the style of this thing. And there's the face. And I can tell you this, guys, look at that. The face just flies off this thing. Oh man, it's just so sad to see, and there's just so much of this stuff about. Look here, this cab part here, look at this. I mean, what is going on? Where's the Department of Fair Trading in Australia cleaning this stuff up? Why is this stuff so easy to get in the markets? The coupling is just rotten on this. I think the battery from memory, looking at the artwork, the battery compartment is up here. It's a little bit tricky, in a sense, that most people would be unscrewing the underneath, I think. Put a battery in, it's an Aldi battery. My friends at Aldi, well, old friends, I suppose. <laughs> okay, let me turn it on. The switch is underneath. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know how fast that's going to be. I suppose we have to put it on the tracks and find out. What is interesting, before I do th throw it on the tracks, it's very subtle. There is a traction tire there. It's very hard to see. You can probably just see me bending the rubber on it. But it's very thin. So if it's thin like that, it's probably going to be near next to useless. What's most frustrating here is it's got this coupling system that's so small and stupid. Oh, I might be able to do it here. Oh, I've done it. I can't believe that. I was struggling with this for about a couple of minutes and I couldn't get them to couple. But because you can't get in there and get your fingers onto them, you can't couple them properly. 
See if I can do, and there, you know, you can often find the hook is shoved up inside here. Oh, this is just such rubbish, really. Yeah, you know, people, you know, I get some people saying to me, Oh, Lee, are you promoting this stuff? I am not promoting this stuff, guys. I mean, <laughs> just weird what people say to you. They obviously just don't get it. Um, there's the hook there. But I suppose you, you're always going to get people who don't understand what you're doing. Or they're trying to prove their point or something I don't understand. I'm actually quite sick of people who uh, want to take it out with me that I'm actually promoting this stuff. Well, before I turn this very nasty train on, there's one thing about it which is quite unusual. Apart from the hump in the track I've never seen before, it's a very low-riding train. I mean, look how close the carriages are to the rails there. Anyway, let me turn it on and see what mess I can make with this one. It's a bit of an unusual train because the power button is underneath here. Okay, let's just see what it does. Don't tell me this thing is just going to play up. Oh, this is just rubbish. I can't even get this thing to to go. How much are this? Seven dollars. These carriages are so low to the track. Come on, it's so low. Here, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh. I mean, look at that. There's just no way this is going to go. This has to be. This is one of the worst Thomas uh, knockoffs that I've that I've come across. I have to say that I'm pretty certain after seeing this now. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, come on. What should I do, guys? Should I get the hammer out? I think I can already hear you saying, Hammer time. Mr. Hammer, where are you? Oh, come on. I'm actually thinking the big problem here is this lump in the track. Which, like I said, we've said before, I have not seen that before. I'll give it one more try. Okay, up and running. Oh, come on. This is just not fair. Well, just before I smack that the kingdom come, let me just show you another playset, which I think may be related to that one. For the princely sum of $15, yes, you heard it right, $15, you can have yourself a Toy Story 3 Happy Train. So the box is telling me that toys are back in town. First grade product, battery operated, music, sounds, and light. And I'm sure you're curious to what the back of the box artwork looks like. It looks like that. The main thing that's spooking me out is this character here. He was creepy. Welcome to Sunnyside. And underneath the box is some interesting artwork in relation to how to put the batteries in. Okay, coming in for the unboxing. $15 is a lot of money for this, isn't it? I, mean, I would have been much happier paying, I don't know, $8 or 5 Or even no dollars by what I'm seeing at the moment. Well, there's a train there. Very weird looking. There's some army guys. <laughs> I suppose you need those, don't you? Part of the Toy Story story. Crisscross, it must be like a figure eight. A little bit of straight there. A lot of curves. I'm just hoping it was going to be the same style of track as that one up the back there. But it looks totally different. Let's take a look at some of this nonsense here. This is really, really nasty stuff. I mean, uh... I mean, you don't, I don't have to explain it, you can see what it is. It is light, it's so light, this, it's so thin. I was going to say this tanker is the same. Yep, it feels like it's about to literally fall apart in my hands. Oh, look at that, I can spin the tank around. Let's take a look at this very quickly. It's got, I've already actually had a play off this. It's got some, um, a very interesting ba battery stack. It's got two batteries on top of each other. Two double A's. And, uh, unfortunately it plays a tune. <laughs> That might get me into trouble. Um, I think it's an X or F tune, I think. Um, look, I, I don't take any chances on YouTube anymore. I've had that much trouble that I might just have to cover up that speaker at the back there. Um, because in the end, someone's going to come along and say, Oh, well, you played my music in your video. And sadly, YouTube has gone completely AWOL in relation to that little problem. I'm going to disable the sound out of this by probing the speaker. Come on, stop, 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 stop. I don't want to hear you, I don't want to hear you. That's probably better, I can't hear you now. I can't hear you less and less and less until you stop. Stop. That's more like it. Sort of curious, I'd call this engine an American design. Happen right there. Got a bit of a cow catcher on the front there. 
a couple of Toy Story stickers, home and hose. What was it? Fifteen dollars. Easy money, isn't it? Let's turn it on and have a look. It's quite interesting. It's got some traction tires there. And it's also got this connecting rod, which is very. It's like a flimsy bit of I don't know what plastic. It's more just a, a thing for show. And there's the traction tires there and the gear, which drives the main wheels there. The track system feels cheap and nasty, it's horrid and flexible. Maybe that's a saviour, but that's the way it goes together like that. And what is very interesting is, look at the ridges on the track here. So that means those traction tyres have got something to bite into to drive the train. Well, I have my figure eight track set up. It's quite easy to connect that track together and get it looking right. Let's give it a burl. And we're away. The fire wheel will explain a little bit more to that, I dare say. Thank goodness I got that music off, I would have annoyed the absolute... Oh. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. You know what we're going to say next, don't you? Welcome to the dark side. Well, I have righted what was wrong. I dare say you need to have some pretty good patience if you're playing with model trains, especially really, really bad ones like this. Let's give it a burl. It's really hard to get going. And I think it's off the track at the front there. That's going to crash, for sure. It's only a matter of time. I told you so. Well, let's try again. Remember I paid $15 for this? Oh, come on. What is going on? Oh, I think it's away. I don't know. Please be on the tracks, please. It doesn't look good, does it? It doesn't look good at all. It looks very tragic. And, oh. Can this soldier help me get this train to work properly? I don't know, was it the fourth or fifth time? Please work. So we can see what's going on here. Okay, I think we're right, we're on track this time. Across that dangerous figure eight, and I'll probably derail very shortly because I'm not having much luck with this one. But strangely enough, it looks like it's away. Once you give it the death curse of thinking it's gonna derail, it won't. I don't know, would this give you enjoyment? Remember, $15 you're looking at here, 15 smackaroonies. Oh, something's come off somewhere. It's going to crash any moment, guys. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, it got back on. How about that? Well, it's only a matter of time. Let's play this out until it goes horribly wrong. Oh, something's amiss there. I can hear something going rackety rack. This is just my imagination. I'm starting to hear things. This thing has rattled my brain. Well, there you go. It's not playing up. It seems to be quite a smooth runner. Thank goodness that sound chip is being deactivated. Oh, oh, something's wrong here. It's that log, that log wagon again. Oh, the oil tanker is off. The oil tanker is causing havoc. Oh, the figure eight. Sets it back on the track again. Wonder if that happens in uh, your other railway lines where you have a figure eight. Does it reset the trains back on the track? Oil tank is off. Will it get back on? It looks like it. No, it's still off, I think. I can hear it rattling on the sleepers. Oh, it's back on. Oh. Now the uh, logs are off. Something's going to go wrong here, I'm sure of it. Those people would be quite happy with this sort of activity, wouldn't they? Oh, here we go. No, no. It had to happen. It's going to happen. Here it goes. Whoa, what? Oh, give me a break. Give me a break. This thing is killing me. Come on, there's got to be a train wreck somewhere here. It's making a liar of me, isn't it? Why is it looking alright for a, I don't know, a bit of an American style. Choo choo, Toy Story theme. How could you go wrong? Oh, something's off there. Oil tanker. Whoa, back on. So exciting. Oh, and she's away. There she goes. Oh, I'm going to take the armies. Oh, I think I've seen enough of that dark side nonsense. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Both these trains need to go to a far better place. So what I'm going to come in and do is give this one a few quality taps with Mr. Hammond to see how it survives. And I'll get this one up on the move. 
on its track and give it a couple of light taps to see how it survives. You know, I was just setting up to do the thumbnail for this video and I was playing with this very, very poor knockoff a little bit more. And look at this, all these little bits come off. And this piece here comes off. It's just, it, it has to be one of the worst of the Thomas and Friends knockoffs that I've seen. For the fact that, look at that. I mean, a child takes it off and chokes on it. This is the real moment. We know this piece here comes off really easy. Just the whole thing, look, just pull it, completely pull it apart. Face comes off. I mean, what a joke. What a complete and utter joke. Do you guys know what Toy Story Episode 4 is going to be called? I do. Return of Mr. Hammer. I don't think the GoPro survived that one. It took a dive off the table. Well, let's come in and survey the damage. Somehow, little microcharger's car has jumped down onto the track here. It's jumped right across the table to make it down here. Up the back here, the Angry Birds have taken a dive, but they always do. They're quite scared when Mr. Hammer appears. There's a battery up here. There's the wheel and the traction tire has departed. There's the caboose or the brake van, depending on which part of the world you're from. There's the top of the train, another battery. Not looking very flash at the moment. Mind you, Toy Story 4 must be an epic film a train wreck like this. Here's the uh, main part of the train. <sighs> Looking very cheap and nasty now, isn't it? It's sort of true colours have come out. Somehow the logging truck has survived. Uh, oil tanker is here. The bottom bit of it, I think, really did get a whack. I think that's the bottom of it. Just being smack And somehow the GoPro survived. I nearly hit that in this video. So it jumped forward and then it jumped off the table. Would have been a $400 smack if I hit that. Would have made it a very expensive video, but then again, I would have been a hero, wouldn't it? GoPro be a hero, isn't that the old saying? Remember what the box said about that toy? The toys are back in town? Well, hopefully Mr. Hammer has readjusted that title. Well, there's one thing I've noticed. Mr. Hammer always tends to have the final say. It's not easy being green. Here we go, in three, two, one. Well, the first thing to note is the GoPro has survived that hammering. Go along to the engine. This is what we have. Most of this ended up on the ground. I had to pick it up, bring it back up to the table. It has broken down to its component pieces. The engine has ejected and it's been hit with the hammer there. I don't know if anyone knows the electric motors, whether that's a good, bad or indifferent. I dare say there's nothing quality in this, considering the way I saw all of this train come together. There's the main part of the train. Not looking very happy these days, is it? Goodbye, good riddance is what I say going along. Hey, look, the little moose toy, the moose trashy has jumped down to the table again. How strange is that? It's happening all the time. Here's one of the carriages. It's the Thomas one. Looks like the hammer's gone in there. Well, it could be a bomb. Same sort of damage from both. Here's the next carriage. This is the underneath of the carriage here. The wheels would have been there. The bomb's taken the wheels out there. Hammer's gone in the top. The bomb's come out the bottom. Looking very nasty. Who was that? Was that lady? I don't know, who knows. And one somehow one of these carriages has survived and maybe that it's lucky day we'll put that away in a box because I may need to come back and look at this train and give it as an example and I can bring this up as one of the worst Thomas items that I've had. But all in all, quite a spectacular little train wreck. Well here's a bit of a look at all the wreckage from this video. Quite a bit got smashed up, that big toy at the start. It was a lot of fun. 
And I'm not keeping any of this because, well, it's just dangerous stuff and it doesn't really key into my knockoff Thomas collection. If there's a Thomas sort of item, I'll keep it, but if it's anything else, it's going to get the hammer. That's if, if it's hammer worthy. There'll be some people saying, oh, Leo, you can't do this because, you know, it's just having too much fun. You can't hammer toys. Well, I can do whatever I like and I'm going to keep on doing it as long as the audience enjoys watching it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, Thanks for watching and bye for now. Come on boys, this one hurt a bit. Well, moving right along, I've got two what looks like Tommy style knockoff Thomas sets here. I've got Thomas busy. Oh. And what's really weird is you can so easily unclip this. And I think one of the wheels has just taken off on the bottom here. Um, so easily unclip this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fail. I want to make it very clear that these toys are killers. If I can get this thing undone here, and it's not going to go, is it? Oh, come on. You're not going to end up in the fail wheel, you fail. Yes, it is. It doesn't want to come out. And here's a look at our little blue Dark Side Hero. If it was in focus. Oh, that one happened a bit off camera, I think. Uh, one of the Thomases lost control. I'll do a reset. Beep. I'm going to try and do a head-to-head -head slammer here. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. Beep. Let's get this brighter face one in for the ram. Here we go. Well, almost here we go. That's a fail. Beep. The lighter face Thomas. Okay, any moment now, there's going to be something really... Nasty, and it's a double fail. Damn points are in the wrong position. The lighter face Thomas, and see if we can get a bit of ramming sort of action. Any moment now, there's going to be a horrid train crash. What? I can't get this to work. This is the third time I've tried this, and it keeps going wrong. Okay, I have my figure eight sorted out. It's quite easy to do that. It's now or never, isn't it? I suppose. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh, that's on the fail reel. Well, I had my figure eight track out. It was quite easy to set up that track. Let's turn it on and see how it goes. And that's a double fail. What is going on here?